Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotac and optimized battery charging has been on iPhone for a while and seems to randomly work for some and not so much for others. This has caused a great deal of confusion around how the feature actually works and many have asked me why it's not working for them. Additionally, with the introduction of the iPhone 15 models with the 15 Pro, 15 Pro Max and others, and now the iPhone 16 models, they added an 80% charge limit option. And in iOS 18, there's even more options and again it has some things you should know about it. Apple recently updated their support page talking about the optimized battery charging and charge limit. So I thought we'd go over that and explain exactly how it works. So optimized battery charging in general can be found in settings, then battery, and then under charging. So you'll see there's all of your stats, of course, and under charging, we have optimized battery charging. Apple introduced this with iOS 13 and it's improved ever since to help sort of prolong your battery health over time. All batteries degrade over time, whether it's an iPhone, Android, electric car, or something else. And until someone makes a better battery, that's what we're stuck with. Now the new thing here is charge limit. So under charging again, charge limit, we now have 5% increments from 80% all the way to 100%. You can now set it that way with iOS 18. So if you want to bring this down to 80%, it will turn off optimized battery charging and allow you to manage it yourself. Apple actually says that your phone will charge within a few percentage points of your chosen limit and then stop charging. So sometimes people have asked me, why did it stop charging at 78% or maybe 82%? That's because it will be within a few percentage points or so, but if you connect it to power and it's dropped more than 5%, it will charge it back up again and resume that charging again within a few points of your chosen limit. iOS can also give suggestions of which charge limit you should choose based on your daily usage and habits you actually have to best preserve your battery health over time. So you may see a little option pop up here. So maybe you're using 95%, it could suggest it seems you have enough battery throughout the day, maybe bring it down to 80% to get the best battery health over time. So again, based on your charge limits, it could suggest something different than what you're using, but if it's got it right, it won't show any suggestion at all. Also, if you bring that charge limit up to 100%, it will say allow it until tomorrow. You can set the limit to 100% or cancel. I'll set it to 100% and then optimize battery charging automatically enables. This is available only when you've set this to 100% on a device that supports it. So if you're not seeing it and you want to use optimized battery charging, set this to 100% and it will show up. And when you enable optimized battery charging, that's what I typically use. Apple says your iPhone will delay charging past 80% in certain situations. Your iPhone will use on device machine learning to learn your daily charging routine so that optimized battery charging activates only when your iPhone predicts it will be connected to a charger for an extended period of time. For example, the algorithm aims to sort of ensure that your iPhone is fully charged when it's unplugged, meaning at night, if you want to plug it in, that's typically what I do, put it on the charger, it will charge to 80% and hold that until morning, basically by the time I wake up or my alarm is set to, and then it will stop and then hold it until that point so that by the time I wake up, we're at 100%. Leaving it charged at 100% can help degrade the battery quicker over time. So that's something that it wants to bring that down as much as it can. However, when optimized battery charging is active, you'll actually get a message on the display saying when it will be ready to go by. However, oftentimes you don't see this as you'll use it around the same schedule every night. So it just doesn't pop up all the time. If you do need it to charge past the 80% you have set or whatever you have set, you can press and hold on the notification and it will give you the option to now charge past that to 100%. However, many people say this still doesn't work after they've had it on for some time. And if you want optimized battery charging to work for you, you actually have to enable some very specific features for it to work or it won't activate. For example, there's many different videos out there telling you to disable different features. So you save battery life, but some of them will actually disable optimized battery charging. For example, if we scroll down, we go to privacy and security in our settings, go to location settings. This must be on for this to work. Also system customization must be on and significant locations also must be enabled. So down at the bottom here where we have system services, some of these must be enabled or it just won't work. So you'll see system customization that has to be on 
and significant locations. Once those are enabled, Apple says that in order for optimized battery charging to work, it takes at least 14 days to learn your charging habits. It won't engage or turn on before that. So your iPhone will need to experience at least nine charges of five hours or more in a given location for optimized battery charging to engage. So basically it's going to take a couple weeks for this to learn what you use this like, and then enable the overall feature set. Again, you can go back in and just manage it yourself. So if we go to battery and then go to charging, if you have it set to 80, it will just manage it that way. So if you don't want to wait, you don't want to turn on those specific features, you can just turn it down to maybe 80% and it will stay that way and occasionally charge above that or below that based on what you're doing. However, Apple says it will occasionally charge to 100% to maintain accurate battery state of charge estimates. So if you see this, you have it set to 80%, but it still charges up, it may be doing that to sort of calculate the battery management system and make sure that everything is correct. Apple also says it will charge to 80% and then stop automatically. However, sometimes it will drop down to 75% again and then charge again. So it won't necessarily just hold it at 80% all the time. It could go a little bit above and a little bit below and sometimes to 100%. So if you see that, don't be alarmed. It's very typical and something that is normal for Apple to manage the overall optimization of your battery health. Now, as far as my battery health, we'll take a look here. I'm at 85 cycles with 100% capacity. And according to Apple, you should get down to 80% capacity around anywhere between 500 and 1000 cycles with the iPhone 15 and 16 models. Apple says you can get up to a thousand cycles, bringing it down to about 80%. That's very normal. However, I'm still at 100% at 85 cycles. So this time around this year, it's doing quite well with the iPhone 15 pro max. It already dropped below 100% by the time we were in December this time last year. So it's doing much better than we had last year. I think around 50 cycles or so we had it drop. However, there is a little bit of a buffer there that it may not be down to that 100% capacity just yet, as it may have started at about 105% capacity based on what the overall battery size was like. Now, many of you have asked me specifically, what charger should I use when you're charging it? Should I use a different charger? Sometimes my phone overheats, it says. And for example, before we talk about chargers, if we go to battery and you see when it's charging, we'll give it a second to load. If we go into different days and maybe we see that it's charging and it stops charging, basically you have an orange color here. It stops it because of heat. If you're in a hot environment, you have a case on your phone, it's very hot outside or you're charging wirelessly or anything else, it will actually pause this if the temperature gets too high. There's temperature sensors within the phone, within the MagSafe adapter, and it will actually pause the overall charging, bring the temperature down, and then continue to charge again. It's very normal for batteries to warm up as they charge. You're transferring a lot of energy, and that's very typical. Not really anything to be concerned about. The iPhone manages itself and will just pull, the, pull back the actual power and wattage, or just turn it off altogether to make sure it cools down enough so it doesn't damage the battery or any internal components. So don't be alarmed if it does heat up, it's completely normal. As far as what chargers to use, well, I typically use MagSafe certified chargers. However, you can use third party chargers such as this one here or anything pretty much as long as it's actually working. Sometimes you could get a message that says it's not supported. And if that's the case, well, then you just can't use it. The iPhone regulates the power into the battery, not the charger. So if you plug in a 100 watt MacBook charger, it will still only charge at a maximum rate of around 28 watts or so. So just keep that in mind. You can plug in just about any charger. And if it's too much power, the iPhone will just pull that power back. If it can't use the charger altogether, Together, it will let you know. But for the most case, I typically use Belkin chargers. I've used anchor chargers. I've used ESR chargers. All of them work just fine with no issues whatsoever. So EcoFlow battery chargers, everything seems to work really well. And again, if it doesn't work properly, it will let you know. So don't be concerned as many of these third-party chargers also have temperature sensors in them as well. So they'll pull back the power if they need to. So hopefully that helps you get a better understanding of overall battery optimization, the newer charge limit, the new charge limit changes, and how it works overall with your iPhone. If you have any additional questions, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. And of course, I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.